PentoML is a Python open source library that enables users to create a machine learning powered prediction service in minutes. In the previous video, we learned how to save scikit-learn's transformers and estimators to BentoML's local model store. In this video, we will learn how to load the latest processors and model to create an API service. Start with loading the processors and model. To load a scikit-learn object, we will use pentoml scikit-learn doc load runner. The first argument of this method is the tag of the model that we will use. Here I told pentoml to grab the latest scalar model and function name tell pentoml which method to use when running the model. The default function name is predict since scalar and PCA are both transformers we will use the function name to be transform and since classifier is a estimator we will use the function name predict okay now we have the processors and model we are ready to create a service with them the first element of bento ml service is the name of the service and runners specify the models that we will use for our service in our case it is scalar pca and classifier after defining the service we can use it to create an api function an API function looks like a normal Python function, but it also takes the decorator service doc API where service is the object we created previously and follow with the method API. In our case, the input is a pandas data frame and the output is a numpy and the array. Note that pandas data frame and numpy and the array are bento ml's types. Now to apply the model on a data frame, simply use scalar dog run data frame. We do the same thing here with PCA and the same thing here with classifier. Okay, now let's try out the service in debug mode by running bento ml serve the path to the file that specifies the API, the name of the service object, and we want bento ml to reload the API whenever we change the code. Now we can view the API on this local host. In the app, we can see that there is a session here called predict. We will click that session and go down to the parameters. Let's insert some values to this app and see how the output looks like. So here I inserted a list of dictionary where each dictionary specifies a row, the key specifies the name of the column, and the value specifies the value of the column. Let's execute this and see how the output looks like. Cool. We can see that the server response is 200, which means it runs successfully. And the output is 2, which means our instance belongs to cluster 2. So right now, it's kind of hard for you so to know which value to insert into this request body. Is there a way for us to set the default values for the request body? That is when Pydantic comes in handy. In the next video, we will learn how to make the request body more transparent with Pydantic.